On our recent trip back to the Outer Banks, we visited an attraction that we had not checked out before, Island Farm in the town of Manio on Roanoke Island. This is the visitor center you encounter when you arrive. This historical site offers a look at life on Roanoke Island in the mid-1800s as told through the story of the Etheridge family, starting with Adam Etheridge, who originally leased this land starting in 1757 and built the home that is still standing on the land today. His son Jesse would then purchase much of the land that forms this site today in 1783. It was owned by the Etheridge family for over 200 years. Today, there is an 11th generation of the Etheridge family on Roanoke Island, though the farm was purchased by the Outer Banks conservationists in 1997. We heard of this attraction a couple years ago, but have had some difficulty visiting as it's only open April through November on Tuesday through Fridays from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Our trips to the Outer Banks are often weekend trips that begin shortly after the island farm shuts down for the week. Admission is $10 per person. After entering through the visitor center, we began our walk around the farm. We passed the blacksmith shop, where there are some tools of the trade. We understand there are sometimes blacksmith demonstrations taking place here, though that wasn't happening the day we visited. What was being demonstrated the day we were there was 1800s gardening techniques. Here, period farmer Gabe is helped by a woman from the future to set up a trellis. Lima beans had recently been planted and the trellis would be used to support growing vines of beans. There were also free-range chickens on the grounds. They even let us feed the chickens. We visited the cookhouse. This whitewashed kitchen was built separate from the house, so the heat from cooking in summer and the fire danger would not affect the living quarters. The historical interpreter here discussed the diet that was consumed on the island in the 1850s, as well as the cooking methods. There was an upstairs loft that was likely the cook's quarters. While the interpreter spoke, a cow kept staring at me through the window. And a chicken who ended up in the cookhouse was plotting her escape. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please help us out by clicking the thumbs up button. We appreciate the support. Another demonstration that was ongoing during our visit was a rag doll crafting class. Jack made me a doll during the class. The instructor showed us how to use scraps of cloth with wool as the stuffing to make rag dolls using only tools that would have been available in the mid-1800s. This was Jack's finished product, which I named Loretta. The rag doll crafting class is held every Friday morning. They also had a corn husk doll crafting class every Tuesday. Since we were interested, he also showed us how these are made, though he didn't have any extra supplies to allow us to actually make one ourselves. There was another demonstration afterwards about folk medicine. The interpreter showed us different substances like honey and witch hazel and flaxseed and discussed what medicinal properties people in the 1850s believed these substances to have. Some of these are still used as at-home remedies today, though with a lot less bloodletting. We generally suggest sticking with modern medicine, though. Island Farm has a couple demonstrations every day that they are open. It could be teaching guests how to make some type of craft, or how to play popular games of the time, or how they washed clothes back in the day. Some days, you can even visit up close with a banker pony who used to live wild and free on the Outer Banks. Next came the tour of the Etheridge Home Place. 
This house was built around 1847. Through the decades, numerous remodeling projects took place to modernize the home, but the home has been unmodernized now and taken back to how it originally looked. You can see areas where two different colors of wood were used because of the remodeling and then the undoing of the remodeling actually resulted in some of the wood needing to be replaced. The wood at the bottom in this picture is original. The wood higher up is more recent. One of the interpreters took us on a tour, and we aren't going to show you everything, just enough to see what it is like. If this kind of thing interests you, then you should definitely check it out if you take a trip to the Outer Banks. This parlor is used as a dining room, but also the laid out room, where bodies of deceased relatives were laid out for visitors to come mourn before burial. The interpreter who gave us the tour discussed construction and painting techniques of the time and was able to answer all our questions. Downstairs there was a guest bedroom and a servant's bedroom. There are a couple more bedrooms upstairs where the Etheridge family would have slept, including the children's bedroom where at one time six Etheridge children slept. There was a lot to see outside the main house as well. There were a couple water barrels and a fire pit for cooking outdoors. There were lawn games out to give guests an idea of what recreation looked like in the 1800s. This structure on stilts was the dairy where cream could rise in the cool shade, which is the first step to preparing butter. The Federal Agriculture Census of 1860 states this farm produced 25 pounds of butter that year. So the government was tracking you even back then. Here's the outhouse. It's a three-holer. No one show this video to hotel designers. We already have see-through barn doors in hotel bathrooms. Let's not give them any other ideas. This next structure is the slave cabin. This building and several other small buildings on the farm are not originals to the site. This is a recreation of a common style of cabin where enslaved humans were forced to live in the area. This farm had five slaves living on the property in the 1850s, including a four-year-old boy. Nearby the buildings is a pen where a cow and a horse are kept. And near that is the farm's grape arbor. A certain type of grape native to Roanoke Island is cultivated here. There's also a huge live oak tree on the land that is estimated to be about 500 years old. This island is called Roanoke Island because this is where the first British settlement in North America known as Roanoke was set up in 1587. So this tree is believed to have been growing here well before those settlers even arrived. The Etheridge family graveyard is near the back of the farm. There are a number of family members buried there dating back to the 1800s. The graveyard is still in use today as a member of the Etheridge family was just laid to rest here a week or so before our visit. Just outside the gate of the family member's graveyard, one of the family member's beloved horse is also buried. Across the road from Island Farm is more of the farm's land. There is a historic windmill that was moved to the farm. The east coast of North Carolina had about 150 windmills in the mid-1800s, which used the power of wind to grind meal. Also, over on that side of the road are two beautiful horses. 
These are the horses that used to be living on the beaches of the Outer Banks. If a horse gets injured or otherwise needs human intervention, they often can't be released back to the wild, so they find homes for them, such as this farm. There's also a herd of sheep on the farm. They were backstage as they had overgrazed their field at the farm, so they were moved elsewhere to graze while the field that they usually live in is replenished. We thought we would be here an hour, maybe an hour and a half, do some filming and move on to the beach, but we stayed here over three hours. It was fascinating. The historic interpreters answered all the questions we could think of. We really learned a lot about the 1850s on Roanoke Island and what it was like for those who existed in that time and place. If you love history, or if you find farm life fascinating, this is a cool place where you could spend a couple hours. By the way, if you do love history, we have a playlist of historical sites like Island Farm that we have visited. Or if you're planning a trip to the Outer Banks, check out our top 10 things to do in the Outer Banks. I'm Alice. And I'm Jack please click the subscribe button and notification bell so we'll be sure to see you the next time we're traveling through.